Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. Your co-host, Rich Gear here, but we also have our special guest. Derek, it is so good to see you again. I'm a special guest today. He is a special, he's always a special guest. All right. And we're talking tonight uh, about the periodic table found in Daniel. This is something that uh, Derek has been very good at with his mathematical mind to see patterns in the scriptures that um, are uh, not obvious to everyone, but it's something that um, he, with his uh, mindset from physics and chemistry and uh, mathematics, uh, is able to see these patterns that the the scriptures have put together uh, in uh, various aspects of things. Now, we've talked about uh, uh, the logarithmic spiral as a uh, creation fun- function, but um, uh, there is much more to the, these patterns than what we don't realize. So, you know, when you're just reading the scriptures, uh, he's done some in-depth studies in, into this that I think are really significant. So, uh, Derek, I'm going to uh, let you get started. Thanks, here. Doug. Yeah, well, that awesome introduction. <laughs> I like that. You talk about my favorite subject, the creation function. And if we have time towards the end, uh, this, this, even though it's a completely separate um, topic, really, um, the creation function actually dovetails right along with this pattern. So this isn't a separate item all by itself. This is the creation function also. But we're going to talk about it for what it is. And uh, what I found is in Daniel chapter 2, there's a really interesting metal statue that's talked about, that's brought out and described in great detail. And uh, Daniel, a lot of people don't really realize, but Daniel was a science student. And uh, he actually, it would be very, um, as far as I'm concerned, for his prophecy that he gave in that chapter, not only to be prophetically true in history, as we'll discuss, but also have significance in science. And uh, so with the description of the statue, um, being made of, uh, it's a metal statue made of several different materials and it's given in periods. And uh, this was Nebuchadnezzar's dream. That yeah, the, the yeah. Caused the, the story, just the thumbnail of the story, is that um, Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon at the time. And uh, he had this dream, but he couldn't remember what it was. And, but he didn't uh, know what it meant. And he didn't know, but yeah. he, didn't, he, didn't, he couldn't remember yeah. the dream either. Not only could he not remember what, what it was, he couldn't remember the dream or what it meant. Um, so that was the challenge. How would you like me to ask you, tell, tell me what I dreamed, and then tell me what it meant. So it's not like I can tell you a dream and you might be able to guess what it means. He just woke up troubled. Didn't right, he? he woke up with, a, with some troubles, and he, got, he tried to bring some, pe- some of his own people in. Um, they couldn't do it, and he got very wroth with some of his people. Yeah, um, that he brought, uh, yeah, he got very, uh, and so he brought in Daniel, and Daniel was able to interpret the dream. Well, Daniel came in at, almost at the last minute. They said, wait, we've got one more guy left here that he, he's, he's in touch with the living God. Maybe he could, because he, he said, not, yeah, not only do I want you to tell what the dream means, I want you to tell me what the dream is. That's right. And very unreasonable, okay? But it was obviously because of God. It, it put him up to doing this. And, uh, and everybody had gone through the astrologers, all the, all the wise men, the, the Chaldeans, you know, who are occultic kind of, anyway, all this stuff. None of it worked. So he says, wait, 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 before you kill him, you know, let me, let me, give, give, me a, give me a moment here. And uh, that's when Daniel uh, and the so Lord. So this is where I really, yep. really appreciate Rich because he's a, he knows a lot about history of all, of all types, especially biblical history. Now, the statue, I'm just going to go through the quick list of, uh, you had a statue that had a gold head, a silver chest and arms, brass belly and thighs, and iron legs, and then a feet of mixture of iron and clay. Now those, Daniel says, um, are various kingdoms that are to come. And maybe right. Rich can fill in, what was the, the gold is started out with the Assyrian Empire. Or the, no, it's Babylon. Or the Babylon Empire. Yeah, yeah, Assyria actually have fallen by this time. There are some people, William Barclay tries to make that gold because what happens when you do that, you don't get the predictive mm-hmm. power that Daniel's prophecy really is talking about. Because at the, at the base of the feet, there's a rock not made with human hands mm-hmm. that hits it, and it's the time of the empire. So what happens is is that um, the head of gold is Babylon. Of course, the next succeeding kingdom was Medo-Persia. 
and that's why he's divided. You got the so who was two the sides. main dude with Media Persia? Was Media that Persia uh, was uh, Cyrus was the one that he's the one that got all the captives released, okay, mm -hmm. and sent them back to their own town. He's the one the Bible says in Isaiah who's going to restore the city and the sanctuary, okay, and he did. Uh, but the main king, he and another king, not his son. His son was kind of a kind of a not very good guy, and, but but comes up Darius. Uh, Darius Estaspus, and he is the main guy that you read about in the most of the Persian Empire. He's he's, I believe, the king in both in Ezra, Esther, and Nehemiah. Wow. In fact, he may have been the husband of Esther. Okay, there's a lot of interesting <laughs> things about that. A lot so, of connections. yeah, a lot of connections. So that's the and it's double sided. Medo was was a weaker part of it, and uh, Darius. There's Darius the Mede, who is not Darius Estaspus. That's confusing. Mm -hmm. And people get mad when you get same names and they're different people. And that, but but the Bible's pretty specific. It it clarifies him. He might have been. We don't really know who he is. They can't really haven't really found much evidence of him. He might have been, um, you know, uh, Cyrus's father-in-law or his uncle or something like that. But whatever. Then the next kingdom comes up is Greece, and it's interesting. That's the that's the torso of brass. You know, mm -hmm. that's the one that comes in. It's more golden look, gold looking. Uh, and then the next one. You have his iron, and it's interesting because the iron mixed with clay, most people kind of lump this into five kingdoms. In reality, this is the fourth kingdom is actually one kingdom, but it's divided. And and it's interesting because the whole the Roman Empire collapsed and comes up in the Holy Roman Empire, mixed with all kinds of the Visigoths, Ostrogoths, all the people that came in that conquered Rome. That's part of that, that's mm -hmm. part of that that latter manifestation of what was called the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire a lot of people don't really understand. Continued to, it went from ancient Rome, the last gas of Rome, believe it or not, was Adolf Hitler. Okay, mm -hmm. goes all the way down there. And there's a reason for that, but we're not going to get into that because that doesn't have to, is not germane to what you're talking about. So there's so what it looks like. There's five things, and there are five because this last part is is, is significantly different. Yeah. But it mixes in with it comes main, out of it comes out of Rome. So anyway, right, so the the history is not the focus of this presentation, correct. but to me. It's absolutely important to understand that these things actually happened, and they were called out by Correct. very deep. If you take the book of Daniel in its entirety, this pattern's repeated over and over, and it's get. And if you get it when you get into chapter eleven and chapter twelve, they're still having trouble interpreting what all that detail means. These things actually happened, so this is very real and fulfilled prophecy. So that's why I feel so strongly about um, looking at this statue because this statue is listed in reverse periodic table order yeah that to me is fascinating you know You're and there's no about the way the elements of, yeah of, 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 numerically of the elements the number of protons in each of these elements descending order there's no way they could have known that at this time so that that to me it got me looking at this um uh, i started looking at this i knew about this 2008 um and uh, I'm going to take you through kind of how I kind of discovered this over the years here. Because it does tell you, it even says each metal is, each thing is inferior to the preceding right. one. Right, that's exactly right. It does each tell metal you that. is inferior to the preceding one. Um, so, uh, the, what, what Rich just got done talking about was periods of kingdoms. Well, the periodic table is also laid out in periods, right? And uh, as a matter of fact, just to, just to kind of thumbnail of the statue here, the gold head is period six of the periodic table. The silver breast is uh, period five, is among period five of the periodic table. Brass belly and thighs, period four of the periodic table. Periods three, two, and one are um, bring in the clay and the mixed, and the mixed mm -hmm. metals and the semi-metals all the way down to what I will we'll outline a little bit later, a full periodic table model can be realized taking the dimensions that you get explicitly from the Word of God. Those being, six, the, the statue is 60 cubits high, it's 6 cubits wide, and you have 10 toes on 2 feet. If you take those, that gives you a three-dimensional periodic table model. And uh, the, the master stroke, or one of the master stroke to figuring this out, was the 60 cubits from gold. Gold is atomic number 79. Subtract 60 from that, you get 19. Somewhat obscure element number, right? A lot of people stop there, I think. Or at least I stopped there for a while. 
But then you take that 19 and subtract the six cubits that the Bible talks about later, which is which takes you to 13. Now that's aluminum. And if you look up what clay is made of, you'll aluminum. find that it's aluminum silicate with some magnesium in it, mostly, mostly silica, of course, aluminum. Into, and that's right there at the toes, right? Okay. You know, that's right there. So clay is in the right spot. Right, and that's that's what made me really look at that, and really I went with that for quite a few years, you know, teaching that, telling about that amount of it. But about a year ago, I decided, you know what, I have some 3D software on my computer. I'm going to make a 3D model of this just to do just to do it. Okay. And I went ahead and I did that, and I and at that time, that's when I got able or I was able to bring in the ten toes aspect and the two feet aspect. Whereas you're able to complete the periodic table from clay all the way to hydrogen, which is the first element of the periodic table. Okay, so this, let's tell, how I'm does just, that work? Okay. So yeah, well, this is just the general structure of the model so far. So pretty, pretty heavy so far. All right. So this is just the general structure of the model, just the thumbnail. It's gotten pretty heavy so far, but we haven't even started yet on this. Well, you started with the heavy metals. Right? We started with the heavy metals. Yep. Mm -hmm. Started with the top and worked our way down to the bottom. Now, this part is where uh, I mean, we may or may not work through. Um, I have a, uh, uh, a little video thumbnail that I made where you can see each of the elements get crossed out as we follow the model. But I'm going to okay. talk about the, uh, the periodic table model. This image follows the Daniel structure at least 12 ways. There's 12 points I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through here. The uh, periodic table's orbital structure is followed exactly all the way through element 30, which would represent um, uh, element 30 is zinc, but that's the part of the brass. Brass is copper and zinc together, mostly copper, but uh, copper and zinc together. Copper is element 29, zinc is element 30. So those two are kind of together. We put them together, and I use 30 as my touchstone on that. Um, so we can we can. The, uh, the second point is the first four S orbitals are exactly followed. And those S orbitals um, start out with the first S orbital is, uh, work, Rich and I tried to work through this earlier, maybe we can get it this time. The first S orbital is in the first period of the periodic table. That would be hydrogen and helium. So before going for explain what an orbital an orbital is so people know what we're talking about. Well, we, we learn in school about how electrons or orbit around mm -hmm. the nucleus. Right. Well, orbitals are kind of how far away not not it's not a distance but it's an energy level or like an orbit of a given electron for an atom. So as you add atoms to um, an atom, there's a uh, they 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 combine in certain ways. First, they combine in twos. And that's called an s orbital. Then they combine in sixes, which okay. is the p orbital. And then they combine in ten uh, tens, which is the d orbital. Okay. Those are the three that that it's kind of an oversimplification of a quantum mechanical F idea. Or f orbitals. Too, yeah, right? but we're not going to get into the f orbitals today, even though they they are a significant part of other models that I have found in the Bible of the periodic table. So we're going to start out, we're going to cross out a few of these here. Okay. Um, so we want to start with the first, this is the first period here that comes across here. We'll, we'll knock out these two, hydrogen and helium. Those are my little toes. Those are your little toes. Those are my little toes. Okay. Now I'll bring this point up first here. Um, this is one of the points I'm going to make, is that not only does it follow, not only will I be marking things off, you'll see demarcations filled as I'm marking them off, but also... It follows, atoms get, have a tendency on the periodic table. Well, these two atoms are small, but then they get big and they work small from, from that would be from left to right. I'm looking at it upside down. From left to right. So they get, they start out, these two are small, then they start out big to small, big okay. to small, big to small. So we start out with the little toes. So we have two little toes. That's the first two elements that I've marked off here. All right. Next, we go to the big toes because this lithium and this uh, beryllium are, are big, are bigger than these two. So we'll go ahead and put these in. So now, as, I, the as I'm marking these in, and my marker's running out of ink, of course, yeah. um, notice also that I'm alternating back and forth. That's called the Pauli exclusion principle, or Hund's rule. There's a certain way that as you're adding uh, 
um, electrons to an atom that they populate. They populate a certain okay, way. Okay, that's what I was going so to why you have from yeah. here to here. As so here's another here here similarity okay. of the model, and this is this this these feet represent the feet of the statue. If I haven't already said that. Okay, so we've marked off these two. So that that is a that closes the second s orbital. That's a group. So we had two successful group closures. Now we have to put in B. C, well actually I should do it this way, B, C, N, and then O, F, N, E. This is the first P orbital. This is the P orbital of the second period. Boron, carbon, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. And That's exactly neon. right. So now, we only had six toes left, right? And these, here's six more that we've knocked off. So we've closed the second period of the periodic table, which ends in uh, atomic number 10. Those are our 10 toes right there. Oh, okay. So next, okay. we have the third period. We have another s orbital, which is only two electrons occupy an s orbital. So then we have sodium, magnesium, two feet. Yeah. We, we knock out this guy. Now, remember, the, period, the, uh, the statue is 60 cubits tall. And six, another dimension is given of six cubits. I take that dimension on the side here. So I can put six elements here. And that's my next second uh, period P orbital, which has six elements. So you have aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, chlorine and argon. So there's my six. And so that, I can mark off your, your clay, isn't it? another group of six, and this is where my clay is. It's right here, down here by my toes, the aluminum, silicate, magnesium. These three are, are right there together. That's my clay. So your feet are partial clay, partial iron, if right. you read the Bible. Mm -hmm. And if you read that section of scripture. So you have the elements and the clay and everything in the, right, in the correct spot here. And I want to go through a few, of the, a few more of these here. So we've talked about... Well, let's go on. Let's let's finish this out here. Okay, so now we're going to start working. We've done. We've used the ten toes, the two feet, and we've used the six uh, cubits. Now we're going to start filling in the sixty cubit height. So I'm starting at the back heels, right? So I can put K for potassium and calcium here. So that is another pair. That's that's my fourth s orbital. And then it gets it gets a little bit the the table starts to change a little bit as far as how it's filled in. I mean, so we have these ten elements here, the iron leg, and the four. This is a total of ten. And here is our d orbital, which is ten, and ending in zinc. So this this ten here it may look like just a an arbitrary number of elements. No. That's exactly 10, which is the first d orbital, which is in the fourth period, the 3d orbital. So we've marked off, as we've gone through, we've marked off each group by its number of groups, be it 2, 6, or 10, in the right order and in the right sequence. Now, if the statue had started out with uh, copper on top or, or zinc on top and uh, uh, and it uh, wasn't in the, the order that you described. It would blow whole, your whole model, wouldn't it? Yeah, it depends. Uh, this whole model depends on the uh, the 79 being gold at the top yeah. and uh, being 60 tall and doing the subtraction back, which allowed me to get into the feet. So now, when you're now that I have the right order of the feet, bringing in the you know the model being correct and and being so. Uh, d detailed and descriptive of the periodic table, I'm able to work my way from the feet to the past work kind of gold. Okay. From, from one, to, from one to, to gold. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a few more of these that I didn't necessarily cover. Um, I don't know if I... Uh, so we got, we got the zinc right here, okay. Right. So the next one I want to talk about is there's a very special arrangement here of the, and this is what I call, or what's called, group 11. You have copper, silver, and gold. Now, when you have in these groups, these groups, whenever you work up and down the periodic table like this, these are like families of elements. These elements have similar properties. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you have the copper, the silver, and the gold. And those, 
And you so in those? the statue, yeah, that, the that statue uh, talks about brass, mm -hmm. silver, and gold. Right. And those are all, at least part of brass is mostly copper. Those are all together in group 11. So the statue actually really fills in the rest of the periodic table in a periodic fashion this way, all the way to gold with this group 11. And group 11 being called out explicitly in the scripture na being named. And these were elements <clears throat> that were known at the time, yeah. which is the gold, the, the silver, and the copper slash brass. Well, it's interesting because you said co zinc and copper, they're right next to each other here. Yep. I don't know what that matters. So I'm going to go not, through a few more of these here. Um, the transition from uh, from metals to semi-metals is made because this, I think we've already somewhat covered this, but your semi-metals are here. So we go from metals to semi-metals as you make this this 90 degree turn here. Okay. That's one more uh, way that this follows the periodic table. Now, we, I may have pulled... Oh, let's talk about abundances. The feet are on the earth, right? Okay. The feet of the statue are on the earth. All right. And the abundances of, of elements in the crust of the earth are very high in, on the periodic table from element one all the way through element 30. Then they drop off a lot. Mm -hmm. So what you can see is all these elements that are on the feet are close to the earth, meaning they're, you know, they are very earthy elements. And these are the actual elements that are highest in abundance of the earth. Okay. And, and this is true all the way up to the zinc, which is uh, element number 30, which is um, at the thigh or the belly of the, uh, of the image. Now I may have pulled, pulled the wool over your eyes a little bit. Not Doug's probably, because mm -hmm. actually we've talked about this before in an earlier show. I think it was actually the first show. If you, su if you subtract, if you count the elements from 79 to 19, inclusive, mm -hmm. it's actually 61 elements. Okay. But. You're trying to, and you're trying right? to say it's supposed to be 60, right? It's supposed to be 60. Oh, no, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the elements, namely promethium, mm -hmm. there's only, it's a synthetic element. All, all that it really exists on the earth is the, the uh, it, and it's not stable, is made by man. It's man-made element. Okay. And there's only uh, like 500 grams they calculate throughout the entire Earth at any given time. Okay. So it's almost like a missing knockout element. Okay. Right? Yeah. So it, it theoretically exists, but it doesn't naturally exist. That's the uh, tex technectium? Uh, now that is actually, uh, that actually they find that in the earth it's very very low amounts mm -hmm. but that is naturally occurring it's unstable but it but it has millions of years stability a half-life okay. so I call that young earth stable this is not young earth stable promethium is not young earth stable it's only 17 and a half year half-life so mm -hmm. you don't count that guy I don't know? don't count it so I think he's a knockout um, knee of stability on in the uh, periodic table Iron has a very special place because it has the most stable nucleus. Oh, yeah, okay. All the elements uh, from 1 to 26 increase in stability as you add uh, nucleons to the nucleus, decrease in stability as you add uh, past iron. So that's where the demarcation between fission and fusion take place. So that knee of stability is iron, which is at the knee of the statue. Amazing. That's pretty amazing. I like the knee of stability. Mm -hmm. And I did say that the this follows the creation function. This uh, this two two element, ten element, and eighteen at the end of peri of period three and thirty pattern of zinc follows exactly the the, the spiral, my uh, creation function spiral. Oh, okay. And we talked about that I think on the first show how I say that the creation function um, follows the periodic table of, of the elements. Mm -hmm. This this pattern here is the same pattern as the creation function. Is it really? Wow. Yes, it okay. Wow. Yes, that's that's really super amazing. Yeah. There's something that I wanted to say is that this uh, yeah. Monday I went over to uh, cash in some of my wife's uh, valuables, and uh, in all that was some gold and some silver. 
And so uh, I'm sort of feeling the effect of, of, of those two elements right now mm -hmm. um, uh, in, uh, in what my life left me because uh, there was uh, uh, some, uh, some of the gold was 24 karat. Oh my goodness. Wow. Just beautiful. And so it's Boy, just that's very malleable. She was a treasure and she left. She, she, she left me a treasure, treasure, but uh, well, it was it just uh, was a, uh, 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 and now that we're talking about gold and silver and the, these precious metals, you know, it, it just makes me feel. Well, it's uh, interesting. I, I, you know, the, there's the, a connection there because you look at the I'm looking at like the the gold is softer, but it's it's more valuable, and silver mm -hmm. is less. It's harder, but it's it's less valuable. And then iron is the hardest yet, and again, then yeah, and then it re then it gets mixed with clay, and it goes backward, and yeah. so it go goes from you know like softer to harder, and then suddenly it's brittle, and mm -hmm. it, and it's like it's not not flexible. I'm just wondering if that has to do with you know the way these elements are lining up here. I'm Absolutely, trying to, yeah, that's it what it does. That that's uh, be quite a chemistry lesson, right. but all all the hardnesses, the uh, the atomic radii, like I said, follows this pattern, big to small. Um, uh, this, uh, melting points of the various items depends on where they fall in the periodic table. There's a lot of, uh, of uh, yeah, but all all those uh, each element seems to have a personality. Yeah, it, it I love just, that. Uh, it's it true. Kind of <laughs> true. Interesting that they all and the, they're all part of God's creation that yep. makes up uh, how things are all put together, and it's uh, it's a plan. And you can see this plan yes. in the periodic table, and the scripture talks about it. That, and to the, to me, that's that's really amazing. It is. It's, it's just like I love the history and the art and stuff, but it's just showing that the Lord is mathematical. I mean, yes, and, He is. And for people like you, that that is like that's wow. That's how I, I, I you guess know? you could say, of many ways, I worship the Lord. I worship Him through what He's created, and yeah, He speaks amen. to me that way. And it gives me, it increases my faith. And the whole purpose of my work is that maybe it'll increase your faith as the listener and the viewer. If you're wondering if the Bible isn't scientific or if maybe that's the way you've been taught. Um, I've, I'm a, a, a degreed phys, a physics guy, um, and I have been studying this for, for decades, and I have not found the bottom of it. So take it from me, the Bible is very scientific. But we'll yeah. see you and next time on Revolution Against Evolution. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight.